So it's not completely uh, straight from the, the series that we're dealing with right now. Uh, but Matthew chapter 8, verses uh, 23, uh, it says, Now when he got into the boat, his disciples followed him. And suddenly a great tempest arose on the sea, so that the boat was covered with waves, but he was asleep. He being Jesus, Jesus was asleep. Uh, then the disciples came to him and, and awoke him, saying, Lord, save us, we are perishing. But he said unto them, Why are you fearful, O ye of little faith? Then he arose and rebuked the winds and the sea, and there was a great calm, so that the men marveled, saying, Who can be that even the winds and the sea obey him? And today, just for a few minutes, y'all know I don't take too long, I just want to look at lessons from a storm. All right. Amen. Lessons from a storm. And the floods came and the winds blew it away. So he just got through telling them right before he, they got ready to go out that if you believe, you build like a rock. If you don't believe, you're building like sand, and the winds and the, and the rain shall, shall wash it away. So they just got done learning the lesson that was needed for this boat ride. Mm -hmm. So they knew if they were, if they believed it, and when, whenever we hear rock in the scriptures, it's, it's talking about Jesus and building upon Jesus and believing in Jesus. And so, and the rock is a foundation and it is sturdy. Right. And so he's saying, if you believe you have a foundation and you are sturdy, Sand, you can go like this with sand, and with no wind, the, the, the sand is still going to go different directions. Right, right. And so that, that's what he said. If you don't believe, you become like sand, and you're going to go in different directions when the storm hits. And so what he's, and, and then after he gets done telling them that, uh, there's a short little uh, route that they go on where they start to do miracles. Jesus starts to do miracles. So he's taught them, and now he's showing them. He, 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 he cleanses the leper. Uh, he heals the centurion servant. Uh, he heals Peter's uh, mother-in-law, uh, and then he healed many on the Sabbath with the, uh, with the that had sicknesses and, and demons that he had to cast out. And then he tells them what the cost of discipleship is, and then he says, let us go across the sea. So they have learned the lesson, and they have seen the lesson in action. Right. right. That's like us. We know, we, we, we got this. Especially my, my group that's here now, we, we have this. We have this, we, we, and, and, and we, we, we study this, we know this, we know what the word says, we, we know what we should do, mm -hmm. and then we've, we've seen it, we've seen it work, we've seen it work, we, we've, we've seen uh, lives change, we've seen people healed, we've seen uh, others delivered, we've seen how he works in our lives, we've seen it and we know it. And so then when he says, okay, let me test what we've taught and what we've learned now. Let me test it. Let me test your faith. So let me, let me put you out in the middle of the sea, put you out up against what you're comfortable with, put you out on the, the, the unfoundation in the water where they're, you're going you know, to rock a little bit, and let's see how you react to it. Right. It's a testing of our faith. So when you go through a storm, it's not necessarily that you that you that you've done something wrong and that what's brought the storm on. It's that God wants to test what's inside of you. Right. Man. Right. <clears throat> and so a lot of times we beat ourselves up and say, well, maybe if I would have did this, the storm wouldn't have come. No, the storm was coming because you were ready for the storm. That's right, my Lord. That's right. That's good. That's it. He knows that you're ready for the storm, and so he says, let me test and make sure that you're ready for the storm. <clears throat> and so the, 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 it's a faith test. Mm -hmm. And because the reason for it is because without faith, it's impossible to please God. Right. It's impossible. There's no other way you can please God but by your faith. Mm -hmm. We can dance until our feet fall off. If we have no faith, it's pointless. Right. And so the only way that we learn about our faith is to go through something that tests our faith. You're wondering why we're going through what we're going through. It's because it's a test of your faith. It's mm -hmm. true. And so in 2 second, in second Corinthians, it, it tells us, uh, chapter 5, it says, We walk by faith and not by sight. A lack of faith will cause you to see things only with your natural eye. 
and you will misunderstand what you see. Look at the disciples. Verse 20, 20, let's go 25. It says, then the disciples came to him and woke him and said, Lord, save us, we are perishing. There was no act of death that had started. But with their natural eye, they, they saw that the storm was coming and the storm was great. Now we can't discount the storm because one, these, most of the disciples were fishermen. So they knew a, a, a calm storm from a great storm. They knew the difference between the two. They weren't overreacting to the storm. But they were seen with the natural. And that's what we do. We, we, we know what God has told us. We know what God has promised us. But then as soon as the situation changes a little bit, as soon as it doesn't look like it was supposed to look like, we say, well, this isn't going to work out because it doesn't look like that it's working out. Sleep represents a steady state, a relaxed state. You, you, you breathe that, most of us, you know, I have some sleep issues and some of you might have some too, but most of us breathe at the same level when you're asleep. You're steady, you're, re, you're relaxed. You're, st you're still. And so that's what, that's what Jesus is saying. He's saying, when you're going through, trust in me because I am steady, I'm the same. I'm the same, I'm the same yesterday, today, and forevermore, I'm the same. So you can trust in me because I'm steady. Jesus doesn't change like, like we do. He's constant. And that's something to be excited about. Because when situations change, our God is still the same. And so the sleep represented that. Uh, uh, he tells them, stop worrying about the variant or the changing climates. Uh, that, that, that your God is steady. Jackie, the three things we can learn from the scripture, the three are the same. God does not get shook up by your storms. One, God does not get shook up by your storms. I am glad that I serve a God that does not get shaken up by my circumstances. Because I do, I get shook up enough behind my own circumstances. I'm glad that God doesn't get shook up behind my circumstances. And so I'm sure... I'm glad that I, I, I have a, a friend that's consistent. God is consistent. Mm -hmm. Hebrews 13, like I said, tells us Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. And so I'm thankful for the fact that Jesus does not change. Rain, sleet, snow, wind, it doesn't matter. 